Shiva Ayadure. We're going to be go live. There we go. Okay. So anyone, so, sorry about that. We had a false start. Um, we're also on Instagram. So anyway, as I was sharing just a few minutes ago, w given the coronavirus events that are taking place, um, the uh, response that is occurring right now is essentially to say we should quarantine ourselves, we should wait for the next vaccine, and it's really about you know a pharmaceutical approach. Um, what I want to share with you is, as I've shared in, in the last many several videos, is that the foundations of our body is really the immune system. The immune system is in many ways the operating system of our body. And that operating system has evolved and come to being by our interaction with many, many, many microbes, many, many viruses, and that's why we exist and that's why we have 7.2 billion people on the earth today. And one of the foundations of the immune system is we have around 380 trillion viruses within us. We have about 60 trillion bacteria within us among the 6 trillion cells of who we are. So we need to put this all in context. All around us are viruses right now. There's lots of bacteria. And the immense amount of fear mongering that has taken place, as I've shared in my previous video, you really got to start wondering what is the purpose of that fear mongering. And as, I, as I've shared with a guy like Anthony Fauci, who's been in this since the time of Reagan and Bush and Obama and all the different presidents, him and the CDC are directly connected to Big Pharma. And what is Big Pharma's real essential fundamental purpose here is to say that all health comes down to using synthetic drugs or injecting vaccines into your body. Uh, since 1962, we have the National Vaccine Act, which put forward guidelines, which is today saying that we have to inject our kids with nearly 30 different vaccines, all interacting together. God knows what they do. And, and a tremendous amount of doses also we, we're giving that people don't even know what the outcomes are. And if you just look at it, the HPV vaccine or the 30 different vaccines that are out there, none of them have had true uh, saline placebo controlled studies. So just think about that. In fact, the one which was Gardasil with HPV was a complete fraud. And then I'm going to, over the next week, probably get deeper and deeper into the entire history of the, the lie that HIV causes AIDS, which is what Anthony Fauci has built his entire career on. Anthony Fauci, this is pandemic version 2.0 for him, and he's essentially did this before with HIV to pen, uh, with, with AIDS. And today what we're seeing is that the coronavirus is, the, uh, is, is gonna kill all of us, and we should be extremely afraid. But what I wanna give you is the fact that for many, many millennia, human beings have survived here by supporting their immune system. And traditional cultures, indigenous cultures, what I grew up in, you see I grew up among, uh, in villages in India, where my grandparents were essentially tribals in many ways. They were indigenous people. They taught me how to cook. We had no running water, no electricity. But in those environments where you would think there's lots and lots of bacteria, lots and lots of parasites, uh, people survived and they did quite well. Uh, so today there's many learnings we can take separate from the Western medicine approach, which I've studied, you know, I have four degrees from MIT, a PhD, et cetera, but I also studied how to cook. Um, I enjoy cooking. And cooking is ultimately where we bring all these amazing nutrients together to support multiple aspects of the immune system. So what I want to do today, in the interest of really helping you, and hopefully a lot of people are at home, I want to not only teach you how to cook a great meal, uh, we're going to make lamb curry today. We have some I'm going to bring over here some amazing lamb here. Um, for those of you who are vegetarians, you know, uh, sorry, I may do another, I love vegetarian food, but today we're going to cook some amazing, this is grass-fed, organic uh, uh, New Zealand uh, lamb that we have today. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to cook the lamb with some incredible rice. Here's some great rice that Michelle fermented. One of the things you need to understand about the current concept that grains are all bad or grains are good. Again, this comes from a reductionist view in many of the diets. If you notice, even in the health food things, there's one diet after the other, ketogenic diet, and then we do, you know, the all fat, or, or you know, then we go into the Atkins diet, or then we use a raw food diet. Again, these are fads, but in traditional cultures, people did use grains, but they used them the right way. When you had grains like this, the first thing you did, I'm going to do this so it's easier for Karina to watch here. Is that better, Karina? 
Um, one of the things that we did was the grains were soaked, fermented, so you created fermented rice, and then the water was tossed out, and what it did was it actually eliminated phytic acid. It also created the grain in a form that your body could absorb it. Um, we're also gonna, uh, we're also gonna, we're also gonna have make some amazing of uh, these purple yams. If you look at many of the cultures who live long, um, they always ate the rich, dark purple foods, and these purple foods really help, uh, you know, uh, eliminate. Uh, candida in your body, lower fungus, and it really supports your body's immune system. So we're going to add some uh, yams. It's my special recipe into the um, into the curry. Uh, we have onions, okay? We have onions and garlic, okay? Garlic and onions, the king and the queen of the vegetable kingdom. That's what they really are. Amazing sulfur-based compounds. Why are these important? For many reasons, they're valuable, obviously, for um, all these herbs you'll see are antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial, but these two in particular, the garlic and the onions, they're sulfur-based vegetable. And why is sulfur important? Because sulfur supports the development of glutathione. Glutathione is a master antioxidant. When you have glutathione, you know, the things that support glutathione levels support detoxing your body. If you're under stress, they support the detoxification of the body. Nearly every process, in fact, all plants fungi and bacteria, uh, through their C1 metabolism pathway, they actually use glutathione to break down a byproduct of metabolism, which is called formaldehyde. So glutathione is extremely important for your metabolic processes, but most importantly, it's, it's a antioxidant. Again, these two are the king, garlic is a king, and onion is a queen of the vegetable kingdom. We use this always in um, every, um, every you know, recipe, most recipes have this. The other thing I'm going to walk you through is uh, we have some amazing spices. You see, you've heard of curry, okay? Curry is not curry. It's not a single spice. And what you see here is I have some spices here. Let me start with on my right hand uh, what I have here. Um, uh, what I have here on my right hand is you'll notice a bunch of spices here. Let's start with the one over here, which you see the bark right there. That is called um, you know, cinnamon, and cinnamon is extremely important. In traditional cultures, this was seen as something modulating blood sugar, anti-diabetic. Uh, many of the people who are immunocompromised right now are diabetics. They have high blood sugar. So, so fundamentally, the cinnamon here that you can see right here is cinnamon is extremely important, which is a bark of a tree. You know, I, I grew up actually finding this, you know, in the in the woods sometimes. But cinnamon is extremely important for uh, anti-diabetic and blood sugar. So those of you who are concerned about your loved ones, uh, who are diabetic, et cetera, again, that is a, a key indicator for immunocompromise, should, should, should think about cinnamon. The other very important nutrient we have here is, is cloves. What you'll see in cloves here, cloves, you know, when I grew up, cloves would always be put in a rice bag. Why? Cloves keep away insects. They're anti-parasitic. If you ever have a toothache, just bite on a piece of clove, it's very nice. I mean, or you can get clove oil. So that's the clove here. We also have uh, pepper. Pepper is extremely, extremely, um, if you see, if you guys can zoom in here, pepper is extremely valuable, uh, particularly for, it's a digestive, you know, it really supports digestion. And then over here, you have this star looking nutrient here, if you see right there. And that's really something called anise. So anise is something I will crush, you'll see, right here. And anise is something I'll put into um, when I make this, you know, when I make my curry. And anise is particularly um, important. It's an antifungal. And for women, it really supports, uh, modulates menopause. So, um, and there's a lot of good data showing this. The other uh, important thing that you see here is also uh, what I call, uh, what is called a cardamom. So cardamom is these green pods, if everyone sees it here, if you guys can see it cardamom of these green pods and there's seeds in there and I will be crushing the cardamom up and cardamom in particular is extremely valuable because it supports respiratory function. We're talking about, you know, the SARS virus or the, uh, you know, COVID, uh, you know, uh, the coronavirus supporting, uh, you know, uh, affecting respiration. Again, very, very good for uh, respiratory action. You will also see over here that I have bay leaves right there, which we'll be throwing in, which really support uh, digestion. And what am I missing here? 
I think I pretty much got all the major spices here, okay? Ginger. Um, I'll come back. One of the things we have here, now I have some ground spices we've done. I don't have the roots, but this is what is known as turmeric. So many of you, when you hear about curry, you say, you think curry is one big spice, but this is turmeric. Uh, turmeric is at actually a rhizome. Uh, turmeric is not a root. It's on the root, it are these bulbs that grow. Uh, ginger, similarly, which I have some here, which we'll talk about here. Ginger too is a rhizome, okay? And, but turmeric, getting back to this, this is ground turmeric. Um, uh, turmeric is fundamentally an anti-inflammatory um, anti spice, and it's phenomenal for liver function and brain function. Uh, it, it's, it's frankly an herb that everyone should be adding uh, on a regular basis because it supports so many different subsystems of your body. Um, if we go over here to this other darker herb that you see right here, you'll see that's called, um, that's called cumin. And cumin is something that really controls cholesterol. And it's, it's fundamentally a, a very, very powerful antioxidant. And over here, I have coriander right here. And coriander is a very important antimicrobial, okay? So coriander, cumin, and a turmeric. We'll be adding all of these in. Um, uh, we have ginger here. What is ginger good for? Ginger is amazing as a digestive. You know, you go on an airplane ride and you get nausea, you know, have some ginger tea, okay? Very, very good to support the, you, you, you know, your, your stomach, but it's fundamentally a digestive. So what we're gonna do, let's come on over here. We're gonna start by, I have this Instapot. If you don't have an Instapot, you should really think about getting one, okay? We used to do the big pressure cookers. Um, we should do the big pressure cookers. Now the thing with pressure cookers is uh, most people didn't really know how to use them, but these Instapots, they made them really easy. What I'm gonna begin with is I'm gonna put this on saute, if you notice right here. I'm gonna start this on saute, but I'm just gonna use it to cook. You, to, uh, you don't need to do that. You can, if you want, saute separately, but I like to do everything in one thing. And here what I have is grass-fed ghee, okay? Um, and it's, it's just turning on, but grass-fed ghee is a lot better than using butter because it has a much higher heating point and it doesn't produce acrylamide, okay? Um, and this is, by the way, grass-fed organic ghee, and it comes from cows which are grass-fed. By the way, um, at one point people were having problems getting this because uh, there were very few uh, grass-fed cows. But uh, what I do is I typically open this up. You can see what it looks like. It's a beautiful gold, and you can make this also on your own. My mom used to actually make it growing up. My grandmother would make this. And I'm gonna put, you know, pretty generous, about, you know, two, one, you know, two really good tablespoons in here, because I, ghee is, again, an amazing nutrient. Um, as you can see, I put that in here, right in there, and it's starting to heat up. Um, now, in some systems, we can also add, I don't know if I brought it out here, but I don't, um, I'm gonna, for this case, I'm gonna also add what you see here is mustard seeds, okay? Now mustard seeds are very interesting seed. Uh, there's a lot of interesting research on it and that how it actually um, supports antioxidant activities. Okay, so I'm adding some mustard seeds and when the mustard seeds start popping, that's when you start um, knowing when to actually start throwing in our onions, okay? So, you know, you listen to it, when the mustard seed starts popping, it's the right time to th throw in the onions, okay? So it's a, and by the way, the gas that comes off the onions, you know, in Indian systems, everything was done for a purpose, and the gas actually provides an antioxidant property, that's what people thought, to if you were using oils. You know, the old days, people used to use seed oils. Seed oil was a little more inexpensive, people used to grind it, and remember, you have to be very careful if you cook with things like uh, vegetable oils because they go from cis to trans. They very fast, um, and the problem is that you create a fatty acid that's not healthy. So you should be very, very careful if you're cooking with seed oils. In the old days, people would make it as they need. But, um, so this is, you can, you can hear it. It's starting to we'll wait a little bit. It'll start popping. If you guys want to hear it, it's starting to pop. So I'm going to throw in a nice, I actually took about, you know, I think three good onions. I love onions, you know? You want to support your immune health, you want to support antioxidant, use onions, uh, they're phenomenal, but we cook them well. So I'm gonna put some onions in here, okay? And you think, there you go, you hear the nice spattering of the onions, if you guys can hear that. I'm gonna turn up the mic if you can hear that over here. And the onions are 
starting. So we, you know, really sort of uh, mix them up a little bit, coat them with the ghee, if you guys can see here. I can turn it around so everyone can see. So you can see, you know, it's all coated nicely. So we want to just, you know, stir it up a little bit and let it start sauteing. Now, as it's doing that, what I'm going to do is come over here, and if you remember these very nice spices, now you can throw them in, and these give a phenomenal smell and a flavor, the cardamom, etc. I wish I could transmit the smell to you guys. But what I like to do is the old mortar and pestle, you know. Um, everyone should get one of these if you don't have it, but it's an amazing way that you're releasing the volatile oils. And uh, if you, you know, if you, if you get the spices which are already ground, just note that those spices are potentially uh, open to getting mold, uh, but when you get them fresh and you smash them in this, you are uh, in many ways protecting um, the microbes of the mold. But I'm gonna take, if you notice, come on over here, guys. Uh, I'm gonna do it right here if it's easier, okay? Actually, I'm gonna do it right here. So I put in um, uh, some, some um, as you can see here, I put in cinnamon, I'm gonna put in some anise because we have four people I have to feed here. Um, I'm going to put in all these cardamom, and then I'm going to literally add a lot of this, uh, the nice black pepper. I mean, you don't need to put this much. And you notice, by the way, there's no measuring here. We just sort of use judgment and intuition. It's not like put one, two, three. You, you can figure it out. You have to feel your way through this. And then uh, what did I add? Cardamom, and I'm going to put some more cardamom in here. Okay. And we have people writing in. Uh, some people, uh, and then we, and then I'm going to throw in the bay leaves. If you see the bay leaves, you can come on over here. I'm adding the bay leaves already in here. Okay. So in the middle of it, I add some bay leaves, and these are again cooking here. We want to get the onions sort of soft because the onions are we're going to add a lot of moisture when we put in the herbs. Okay. But these, I just take the mortar and pestle here, and I start crushing them up. And this basically, what I'm doing here. Uh, you, you, it basically is releasing a lot of the olive oil oils and I'm mixing it up. I don't want to smash them that they're grounded. What I want to do is get them to a point that they're sort of, you know, nice chunks. And so you can, so you can see what I've done here. It's about that. Everyone see that? Is that good? So you can see they're pretty well done here for the Instagram viewers. And then we just put them in, okay? We just toss them right in here and you can see, can you smell that guys? Yeah, it, smells it smells awesome, okay? You can smell it. Uh, we have Nancy here, we have Michelle here, we have Karina here. Um, Michelle, I want to thank is, uh, we have a, uh, Nancy's producing this entire segment. She's got a degree <laughs> in broadcasting. We have Michelle, who's our Instagram, and Karina is managing all the other devices. So anyway, so that let that go over here, okay? Now, while this is going, what I like to do is I'm going to actually add the lamb, you know? Um, these were, you know, very humanely treated lamb, as I understand, you know, grass-fed, etc. And I just throw them right in here. You can see, and I toss, saute them all in there, okay? So they're all sauteing in there. Can you guys see that? Is that good? Okay, so you can see I'm sauteing all the lamb in there. And... I want to get them sort of brown. You see they're starting to get brown. We just leave them in here. And one of the things we add at this point, and you notice this is pretty fast. We're doing this very, very quickly. So you don't, it's, that's what's great about this Instapot. And all the spices here, probably about two tablespoons here, I just throw it all in there, okay? So the spices are done in there. And again, we mix it all up. Now you could, since I decided to do this pretty quickly, we were out collecting signatures. Um, you could have marinated this with yogurt, you know, overnight. But this will still come out phenomenal. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm coating all the spices here. The onions are there. You know, this will just this just looks beautiful. If you look, it's golden, um, etc. While this is cooking over here, if you can look, the rice. I'm going to put in enough water to sort of come at that level. What do you think, Michelle, is that good? Yeah. And we're gonna start up the rice, and I put it on boil, and I have a little, where's my cover here? Here's my cover, one second. I'm getting my cover. 
And we'll start the rice because we're gonna have some rice um, and this is cooking. Now the last piece of this entire thing is, is a very, very important, uh, let me come on over here, so I, I wanna explain this. One of the important things, you wanna come up closer, Karina? Probably a point. Uh, one of the important things is we take the garlic and we take this ginger and one of the important things in Indian, when you're making curries, we take fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and we pound it into a paste. And this is called the garlic ginger paste, which is you know added uh, to the meats. And it really gives, and it's all fresh. We're not doing powder. I could do powder. This is fresh garlic. So I like, I love garlic. And by the way, to all of you listening, uh, this is what I do, you know. And by the way, anything I'm giving here is not medical advice. It's a big disclaimer. If you want to, uh, if you, uh, you should probably go talk to a medical doctor. If you think food is something that you need medical advice on, you should go do that. Um, but what, if you ever start getting a cold and you start feeling sick, one of the important things is that you have a time frame. Remember what I talked about. When you first, when a pathogen first comes to you, which can come through your eyes, your nose, your, your ears, your orifices, or through your mucous membrane, your innate, and your innate system kicks in. And when your innate system kicks in, your macrophages and all the different things are starting to kick in. By the way, I'm gonna put in a little bit of water, just a little bit, because this is getting and you can decide how much you want. It just has a little bit of water. But the innate and your adapt when the innate system is trying to fight off the incoming virus where you may feel a little throat and you may feel a little bad, take as much garlic as you can take, okay? As much. This, if, um, if you want this much, chop it up into some ghee. Make a, just tons of garlic toast and eat it. It is one of the most amazing, powerful things to stop that cold in its tracks. Um, so let's take this the garlic, which I take a handful of here, and you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna take all of this ginger here, and you're gonna see me cover it, and I'm gonna start smashing it here. In fact, I'm gonna do it over here if you don't mind. So you'll see me really starting uh, to really make this into a paste. Now, if you have a Cuisinart, things like that, but if you, know, if you aren't working out nowadays in the gym, you know, this is a great way to work out a little bit of workout, a little bit of uh, thing, and you make it literally, you keep smashing it until it becomes a paste. And you can see what's going on here. It's getting down to here, and I'll keep smashing it until it becomes a nice paste. And um, you could, if the, the spices that I had before, you could put those into these and do it later, but I like to do this separately. And the these are pieces that um, you can cut smaller. I cut these pretty big, and I'm really smashing it down. When I grew up in India, we used to have these big stone things, and a big stone, and you'd pound it in there. And uh, uh, the women were pretty strong. <laughs> okay, you don't want to screw <laughs> with people like my grandmother and those people. Okay, they kick your something. Uh, so, so you can see that this is releasing a lot of wonderful. Uh, 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 fragrances and and I'm making it into a pretty good paste here okay and what I do is I literally use my hands and I take it and I put it all over here now I could have made it deeper in the interest of this time I've made it here put it here and then again mix it all in there I love more and more of this, but should I just throw this in there? Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna actually pound it a little more because I love garlic and given everyone's fear of viruses, we were just out by the way with Michelle, with Nancy, collecting signatures. A lot of people out there wearing masks, a lot of people out there wearing gloves. You know, you put this kind of stuff in, in your diet, garlic, uh, a lot of bugs will stay away from you. <laughs> um, and Again, you should do what's right for you. It's not saying don't wear gloves or any of that, but uh, uh, these garlic and things like that are amazing uh, nutrients. One thing I want to say is everything that I've shared with you, all these spices, a common thing with them, they're antifungals, antimicrobials, and they're anti, uh, you know, virals, most of these spices. So this was always included in the diet. So why is this important for those of you if you eat meat, the traditional systems always included these spices 
because they knew that meats themselves may have other types of bacteria, parasites, etc. And typically these spices you would also um, you know, uh, marinate overnight. But the bottom line is, it's not anything's good or bad, it's how you mix them together. So here we go. So this is going pretty well. And you can see, if you see it getting dry, um, this is all judgment. But I can, I'm going to put a, what do you think, Michelle, a little more water? A little bit more. I'm going to put a little more water in here. Not too much, because what happens is there's enough moisture in here. If you put it too, the more moisture you add is how thick you want your you know, curry to come out. With curry meaning this mixture. So that's going. And you can see our rice is starting to cook. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is, uh, stir the rice. we are now, this is my secret. No Indian does this. This is the integration of East and West. I'm going to take these amazing yams. I keep the skin on. A lot of good nutrients, we wash them off. A lot of good dirt. Dirt is good, dirt is not bad. And I simply just put them right in here. I layer them right into the top. And I'll mix them in, right in there. And why are these yams good? Remember I've spoken about that dark vegetables have high amount of, uh, you know, these have a uh, high amount of nutrients that your body can actually convert to vitamin A and defeat candida. Now I also, I'll put salt in, but I add dulse. Dulse is an incredible source of iodine, okay? Natural, right, you're not taking, I mean, if you wanna take pills, you can. Uh, iodine and iodide, you need both. But dulse is a sea vegetable which really supports your th thyroid so we can take these amazing vegetables and convert it to vitamin A. So I just put a, you know, Again, it's, you notice it's a purple, it's, it's purple here, deep dark purple vegetable into that. And then once we're done with that, we're pretty much done, guys. We simply, uh, I may put a little more water in here. What do you think? A little more water? I think, I think we're going to add a little more water right in here. And then the, the most hardest part of this entire thing is putting the top on these Instapots. Okay? So let's see, put it right there. That's it. Now, the Instapot has two things. I'm going to close it, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to switch this to go into meat stew, okay? And this, I'm going to stop here. So, um, this is turned. And over here, as the rice is boiling, one of the things I'm going to do is I stir it a little bit, not too much, and then we cover it on low, okay? Great. So there you go. This is cooking away. We have our, and this will take about 10, 15 minutes, and I, I want to talk to you about something while it's going. Also, I, you notice I'm making some greens here. This is wonderful deep uh, kale. I'm going to start heating it. One of the best ways to cook, in my opinion, is steaming foods. You know, you can eat raw vegetables when it's, you know, when it's in the summertime. You have to adjust the seasons. But when it comes to the wintertime, right, Lightly steamed is better, and you don't want to cook the hell out of your greens because you want to be concerned about what are called oxalates, oxalic acid, uh, particularly if you cook the hell out of spinach. Now, I cook it very lightly here, and look, if you're going to eat, if you, if you are going to, um, some people, for example, you know, if you're going to take vitamin D3, this is a vitamin I've talked about, you know, during particularly the winter time, people will typically take with this to balance the vitamin D3, vitamin K. However, if you're taking D3, I always try to get stuff from food, and you're eating the green leafy vegetables, you can balance, you know, you support the vitamin D3 uh, in many ways. Okay, so we have this going. We have our kale going, which is, we're gonna start here. This is going, and then we cover all this. Okay, put away our ghee. and we're in good shape. All right, let's have a discussion on a couple of things here. What I've just made here, what's gonna come out is a delicious meal which, which I'm going to be sharing uh, with Michelle, Karina, and, and uh, Nancy. We'll be plating it, but we'll have, you know, we'll have a starch here, a little bit fermented rice cooked, we'll have a green vegetable, and we'll have a protein meal which also has some very good nutrients. So you got everything coming in here, but most importantly, we've used spices, antiviral, antibacterial, antiparasitic, combined with many of the other properties I went over. 
So what I'm trying to tell you is this is really medicine. Food is medicine. And that's probably the important takeaway. One of the interesting things we also need to understand is this technology, this is technology that we just went over. We tend to think technology means you take some little pharmaceutical chemical, you put it in a test tube, you kill a bunch of things in it, and then you go into you know, human testing and trials. You have to understand all of these herbs that I went over have been tested for thousands and thousands of years. So we really start having to ask, and what the, what's happened is uh, in the FDA regulations, uh, if you want to say that this herb has this particular function, the FDA forces you to do clinical trials on it. That's part of their, what they call their gold standard. So um, if you want to say turmeric is an anti-inflammatory, if you want to say um, uh, cloves, which have eugenol in it, are an anti, you know, you know uh, a bacterial, et cetera. Um, according to United States laws, you have to do what are called, at the highest standards, you have to do clinical trials to lay claim to medical claims, okay? That's done through the FDA. However, if you want to lay claim to claims that are as, as a supplement, okay, that goes through the food FTC, okay? The FTC, if you want to say, hey, I think, um, you know, coriander has this effect, the FTC's ruling typically was that you have to do uh, rand randomized controls uh, tests, RCTs. However, in the 11th Circuit Court ruling, it was ruled that if you can show biological mechanisms of how these things affect a particular biological mechanism, that that could also serve for substantiation, different than drugs. And one of the things that I, uh, you know, the invention that I recently created out of my work at MIT called Cytosol allows us to do mathematical um, understanding of these biological mechanisms. We also can take all of these phytochemicals, test it on the computer without killing animals to actually figure out how those combinations of nutritive ingredients work. So it's very exciting work. We've been doing this for a long time. We have a lot of very innovative nutritional companies who want to work with us. We had originally created with the hope that the pharmaceutical companies would want to use it to lower the cost of drugs, to lower the cost of toxicity, but many of them really are on their path. I would love if they used it, uh, but they're not interested by and large because they follow a methodology which is to do, you know, test tube, kill animals and go to human trials. Uh, the, the technology of Cytosoft can help in a number of ways. Um, so we'll let this run for a little while and maybe what I'll do is I'll take some questions as they're coming in. What's that? Can you give me the salt? Yes. So one of the things we will be adding salt at the end, okay? This is Himalayan sea salt. I'll be adding it at the end because everyone has different tastes that we'll add uh, in the end. Let me take a couple of uh, questions. You may have some com com things coming. Kale is getting over steamed, okay? Uh, well, it hasn't really started yet, okay? We're still starting that. So I have it on very, very low. This is actually the, the rice, which is basically done. So I'm gonna turn it off. The, the rice is essentially done. When we fermented it and we soaked it, it's much faster. It takes you know, less than five or 10 minutes. So that's going well. Uh, someone said, uh, go back to basics, everybody. Stop buying pre-made food, do it yourself. So look, I think part of the blessing in disguise of what's going on is we have an incredible opportunity for people to really recognize that making food is supposed to be an enormously, you know, let me just take up, uh, an enormously enriching experience. You know, if you cook like this and you eat like this every day, at least have one meal like this, I can, I can pretty much say that you're gonna at least feel great, you're gonna feel good about what you made, and you're getting tremendous amounts of nutrients. You're hitting your body subsystem with so many different things that you're supporting multiple molecular systems in your body. Yes, you know, you can take the pills, right? This is, I would say, the second thing long before you do drugs, okay? But if we, if we do food and we combine it with supplements as needed in a very uh, important way, you're really solving a lot of the things that you would uh, do from, uh, you know, drugs. You know, in the Indian system of medicine, so for example, in the traditional systems of Siddha or Ayurveda, it was seen all diseases had six stages. So there was the early stage, the, you know, the second stage, third stage, fourth stage, fifth stage, sixth stage. So in the, in, the, in, the, in the traditional teachings, 
if you could catch stuff in the early stages, which is essentially food and exercise or yoga, you could really stop the disease. Now, if you catch it in the fifth or sixth stage, that's where you have to get really harsh with it. I would argue that modern Western medicine waits to catch stuff in the fifth and sixth stages of the etiology of that disease. And when you do it that way, well, what happens? Well, you have to pound away, you have to take a wartime approach, chemotherapy, right? Or we have to do surgery, or we have to do pharmaceutical drugs. But the key point is food is medicine. What's occurring right in this little refinery right here is a powerful set of chemical reactions that are taking place. And by the way, what's going on here is not something I put together. People figured out each one of those ingredients over thousands and thousands of years. And it's time that Western medicine and we as people started integrating East and West into our lives. I'm not saying everyone should not, you know, if you, you know, obviously get, you get in a, God forbid you get into some car accident, I don't think this is gonna help you, okay? Right away, but you have to use much more, you know, invasive approaches. But on a day-to-day -day aspect of human existence, um, food is ultimately medicine. And what I find fascinating is that in this entire discussion, of the coronavirus, we have no one at the senior most levels of the United States government talking about food. No one is telling immunocompromised people, hey, eat this food, or why don't you try this supplement? Isn't it amazing? It's really quite unfortunate that this is taking place, that we have allowed ourselves to be bamboozled, you know, drugs, 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 eat, you know, eat, you know, processed foods all day, and then, the, and, and if you look at what's happening with big agriculture, the Monsantos of the world, you know, you go down, you know, you have, if you go down to a, a shopping market, it's only probably one twentieth, five percent of that, of that shelf space or the square footage in, in be it Whole Foods or anywhere is really, um, by the way, you can look over here. When my green vegetables get green, I don't like overcooking them, okay? As someone was just commenting, I pretty much stop. And you know what I do? It, it, this is where, this is when I add olive oil, okay? You don't wanna cook with olive oil for all sorts of reasons. This is where I add a little bit of olive oil right there, and that's it, okay? And I turn everything off, and I in fact like to take it off of this, and this is done, okay? And you let it just simmer in there. But you don't want to over you don't want to overcook your vegetables, right? You, I like that nice green thing. But what I was saying was the notion of food as medicine, and the notion of using concentrated ingredients. Um, you know, I have, for example, oregano oil here, right? Um, I do. You know, there's a, there's a couple of you know, there's amla. Amla is the Indian gooseberry. It's a powerful source of vitamin C. Now you can get it from the kiwi, from the citrus fruits. If you don't have it, amla is essentially total vitamin C that helps your body's functions in many ways. And then you have oregano, which the Italians have been using for years and years and years. Again, it's a powerful antibacterial, helps in multiple, multiple ways. But these are things, again, you can add oregano. We have a little garden, indoor garden here that we grow stuff, Michelle grows these things. But the important point is food is medicine. And I think we need to all start asking, why is it the government of the United States and why is it the healthcare system when Bernie Sanders and people people call you know healthcare for all Medicare for all there's no discourse in any of this about food as medicine in fact what we've done is the big ag which means big agriculture is all about processed foods processed foods processed foods so uh, how, where are we going here we have a little bit more to go it's cooking away uh, it's going to probably take another 15 minutes yeah so um, uh, what I want to do is let's take some questions. Uh, we have Jen on the phone. Jen, are you there? Jen, do you have any questions coming in? Let's see. We have some questions coming in. Please feel free to ask questions. We wanted to make it a, a conversation as people are out there uh, sitting at home wondering some what to do. Some people asked if the garlic was cooked when you were talking about garlic toast. Yes, so, so the question is, is the garlic cooked? Um, so one of the interesting questions is, again, what I was saying was in the early stages of when you're feeling an infection coming on, and this is where you have to start uh, listening to your body. You know, one of the important things is health comes from you becoming in touch with your body. You know, the activities of meditation and these kinds of things. By the way, you notice this thing over here 
it's off because the steam is cooking it. If I did this, you know, it, it's still the steam is pressurizing it. And if you want to let off steam, you turn it the other way. But um, the important um, thing is that, uh, what was I talking about, Michelle? Garlic. Yeah, so, so garlic, for example, when you feel the early onset of an infection, that's when you want to nail it right there. And this is what I was saying, you need to become at least aware of your body. And the more you become aware of your body, you can use very simple ingredients. But in, in the case of garlic, this is raw garlic. It's raw garlic. And what we do is I, I typically cut it into small slices when I do this garlic toast. Take the ghee. I take, so the, the formula for me is I take ghee, roast the garlic in it very lightly. You don't want to overcook it. Just brown. And as much as you can take, take a piece of nice bread that you like. If you don't do bread, get non-gluten-free bread. Put it in there and just eat as much of it as you can. And it has a very powerful effect along with if you, um, you know, beef up your vitamin C. If you're going to take vitamin C, take as, in my opinion, what I do is take as much as I can, dose, you know, 1,000 milligram doses. You know, the worst thing that happens is you get diarrhea, okay? That's the worst thing uh, that's shown. And that, you know, uh, and then you back off a little bit, okay? But these are very simple things right in the kitchen that anyone can start using. Are there any books that you can recommend to, to suggest so I can educate myself on health and foods? Yeah, one of the greatest food books that's written, I have it somewhere here. Um, let me see if I have it. One second, stay there, guys. Uh, I may have it here. Uh, I, oh, is it is in here. I don't have it. But it comes back. One of the best food books, and I studied with a gentleman by the name of Paul Pitchford. Okay, Paul Pitchford wrote a very, very bu big book and about healing with foods, healing with whole foods. And it's a great book because it looks across all different cultures, Japanese culture, Indian culture, um, all different cultures. And you can really, Chinese culture, uh, traditional cultures, that you can really learn the power of foods. It's got amazing recipes in there, but it gives you an indication. Someone just asked about dulse. For example, seaweeds have been used for many, many years Dulse is an amazing seaweed. It's, it's a source of iodine. Um, you know, there was a time in the United States when we used to have salt in our diet, and it was iodized, if you think about Morton salt. And what ended up happening was the doctors, in their reductionist way, told, scared people the hell out of salt. So people stopped doing salt, which means they also stopped getting iodine. And iodine and iodide is both those both you need for your thyroid. Otherwise, you lead to hypothyroidism. And you can read about this. This is not something. Um, someone just said colloidal silver, right? Uh, colloidal silver, you can research it. It has a lot of uh, very nice properties, you know, as an antibacterial, antimicrobial, etc. Any other questions, Michelle? What do we got? Um. What's that? What about that report that you planned to send? Yes. So tomorrow. I'm going to be putting out a report. I've gotten, um, if you look at my chat and my, the amount of volume of very nice questions that we've been getting, people have been asking, hey, what can I do to protect myself now, right? Uh, people, people said you've talked about vitamin A, vitamin D. So I'm going to be in this report that I'm going to be sending to the President of the United States. Look, I'm a PhD. I study engineering systems. The way the medical mafia has set everything up, it's to be very, very litigious, right? So uh, the disclaimer in all of this discussion is that I'm not offering medical advice. You know, this is not medical advice, this is food. So when I send the, this proposal to, the, to President Trump, I'm going to really lay out um, how we should take an approach of triaging what we have today versus shutting down everything, which is what Fauci and certain people, I believe, have political interests in destroying this economy to do. And it's a political conversation we can have. But from my view, people did not want this president to be in office. First, it was Russian collusion. Then the goal was impeachment. And now the goal is let's crash the economy uh, to essentially get him out, you know, to hurt his chances of reelection. And my view is that what's going on is we need to balance. You're in saying it's frozen, that this connection is frozen. Uh, which collect connection on here? On Instagram. Oh, okay. Did it run out? No, it's, it looks like it's working. 
Uh, you're fine. It's working. I think you're okay. 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 We'll continue. Uh, if someone on Instagram, Jen, if you can see if it's not frozen, you can just text me, Jen. Um, but uh, Jennifer will let us know. Um, but I think the, the critical point here is that w one of the things we're going to be doing is that um, I believe the best way to address this is to literally send a formal uh, proposal on how we balance immune health combined with economic health because both are related. We're, what we're looking at it is that the economics of health are be becoming interconnected. My video ended. That's okay. okay, that's fine. You just restarted again. Okay. Share the story and you just restarted again, Michelle. Okay. There. One second. One second, guys. We have to get Instagram going again. There. There we go, Michelle. Just hit live. Okay. So we're doing multiple platforms. Um, but in that report, I'm really gonna say, how do you, those people with corona, what do we, what, I, what my recommendations is they should have from a supplement standpoint. The second piece is those people who are immunocompromised, and I'm going to uh, give some directionality what I mean by immunocompromised. Well, immunocompromised, in my view, include the elderly. Immunocompromised include the people who have high blood sugar, those people taking some of these monoclonal drugs um, and it's going to be you know diabetics we're going to really have a set of people who we consider immunocompromised and what protocol we should give them and the third set of people are the people who are uh, everyday people like us you know what we should do in the midst of this environment but i think it's frankly quite outrageous that we're shutting down the entire 20 trillion dollar United States economy based on the recommendation of one individual, Anthony Fauci. And we're going to talk about him. This individual has a huge history of, in my view, fake science that say in the early stages that HIV was directly related to the cause of AIDS, redefining this entire thing, getting all the Hollywood celebrities involved. You know, a lot of them made a lot of money and got a lot of brand exposure as though they're the ones fighting for AIDS victims. And it was based on a false theory. That theory was that HIV was a cause of AIDS. I'll repeat again, that HIV was a cause of AIDS. Gallo, if you want to look him up, it was a guy who did, um, stole essentially the HIV virus from the French and then could never find really enough virus because antibodies had already been created and then uh, was actually admonished for academic misconduct. Fauci, as I understand, came to his aid and, and, and as the story goes, they struck a deal. Fauci would get elevated, Gallo would move back to the background, and since that period, Fauci has essentially become the leader in this country, or the misleader in my view, of promoting a false view of the immune system. And I'm here to correct that. And the problem is academics who owe a lot of favors to Fauci, because Fauci has huge influence in controlling the amount of grants into these institutions, they keep their mouths shut. Okay, so what we have in this world right now is scientific consensus, not the scientific method. The reality is if you take an engineering systems approach to understand the body, you find out that the, mechanistically that the immune system is a very complex system and it is not a system that always needs vaccines, 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 okay? And, not, and to say that everyone in this country should all be vaccinated and that's the only intervention does not take into the complexity of your body, your body, your body, your body, and my body. Everyone needs what's appropriate for them. I'm not saying pro or anti-vax. What I am saying is one size does not fit all, okay? In fact, in the Indian system, by the way, we have about, about uh, uh, 13 minutes left, um, even these meals could be customized. And in that model, they had the concept when my grandmother looked at, for example, uh, Nancy or she looked at Karina or she looked at me when she observed my face she would determine my body's constitution okay or my body's system state okay and this was a traditional systems of medicine uh, if you had diabetes you had diabetes and you had diabetes not everyone is given the same set of herbs in fact you would figure out your particular constitution and in that system of medicine every herb Every food here was categorized as Batha 
pitta or kapha. V-A-T-A, and you can look this up, P-I-T-T-A or kapha. You're probably looking at me and saying, what the hell is this Indian guy talking about, right? It sounds like some wacky terms, right? Well, vata, pitta, kapha were used to categorize foods. For example, um, ghee is a kapha, kapha producing food, okay? Um, you would call coffee, um, coffee would be considered a vatha producing food, and I'll explain why. And you would take something like, um, uh, I don't have any ginger left here, let me see if it, but if you, you take something like ginger um, or turmeric as a pitta producing food. So what do I mean by that? So in the Indian system of medicine, vatha producing foods were the ones that created um, movement, caffeine. What does it do? It creates movement, okay? Pitta are those things that support digestion. That was like ginger, you know, certain types of uh, coriander, cumin, they supported digestion. And then the kapha things were the things that supported structure, the oils, right, or these kinds of things. So um, now, when, when in the Indian tradition, when someone looked at your body, they would say, oh, Karina's a vatha pitta body type. Um, uh, they would say, Nancy's maybe a pitta kapha, and Michelle's vatha pitta and kapha, where people have all different attributes. And then based on understanding you, you could also see your deviation from you. So let's say you're a vata pitta and you suddenly became a kapha pitta, okay? So the goal of these traditional systems of medicine was to bring you back to you. Now what I've just shared here, the, many of these Indian practitioners or even Chinese practitioners cannot explain this. So the Western medical doctor poo poos that, ah, this is just a bunch of uh, wacky people talking some you know, indigenous medicine. So in 2007, after I finished my PhD, you know, at MIT, I had all my credentials, so everyone thinks I've done something great, right? I used those credentials to go back to India for two years and study what is Vata, Pitta, Kapha, what is the system of medicine? And what I uncovered was that Vata, Pitta, and Kapha relate directly to their engineering system counterparts in information theory. And that counterpart is called transport, conversion, and storage. And by the way, quick commercial break. Everyone knows I'm running for United States Senate. I'm an MIT PhD, I have four degrees, all that good stuff. But I'm running for United States Senate. And anyone who goes to my campaign site, Shiva for Senate, S-H-I-V for Senate, and donates, I actually, I, I hate taking stuff from people without giving anything. So when you donate $25 or more, I give you a book called System and Revolution where you can understand the system's basis of any system in the universe. You also get a tool that you can start figuring out your body system so you don't have to fly halfway around the world to go to India, okay? But it turns out in engineering systems theory, there's something called transport, conversion, and storage. Transport is motion, the motion of information, matter, and uh, energy. Conversion is the attributes of the world, everything all right, Michelle? Yes. That convert things. And, and storage is the structural elements of everything in the universe. So for example, the I, if you have a computer, right, the computer has input and output, transport of information, the central processing unit is what converts you know, information into another form, and storage is a memory. In the case of your physical body, we're gonna eat these foods, right, they're gonna get transported through our body and come out, some of the garbage, right? Some of it will get stored in our tissues, that's storage, and the conversion element is our digestion, okay? So there are foods that support digestion, there are foods that support transport, and there are foods that support storage. I hope this is clear. So transport, conversion, and storage are what match with Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. So when I got back from India, I had this big aha moment, and I was able to see that the traditional systems of medicine in India were not actually systems of medicine. But in fact, what they were, were an engineering approach to the body. When I got back in 2010, I actually met with the head of the department of MIT, and I created a course called Traditional Medicines and Systems Biology. 300 people, 200, 300 people would show up on a Thursday night. MDs, yoga people, acupuncturists, and this knowledge brought them together. And that's called Systems Health. If you go to systemshealth.com, you can see it. Uh, but I, one of my missions I'm realizing now is I used to offer this to practitioners. I'm working very hard with my team right now to figure out a way, uh, maybe you can hold that, um, Auntie wife Michelle, um, we have a dog here, puppy dog. He stole one of my lamb uh, pieces. But one of our goals is really to make this systems knowledge 
the system's health knowledge. Because my view is, frankly, the MDs overall, a lot of nice people, but most MDs know nothing about the body as a system. They're not trained in that. And it's time that we have a revolution in health and each one of you starts understanding how your body is a system. We start essentially retraining MDs as well as practitioners. And you know, I've been doing this for most of my life. When I created the Systems Health program, I offered it you know, in private sessions, but I'm working very, very hard to try to create an online version of this and make it extremely accessible and affordable to everyone because it's about time that we each started understanding the system's nature of our bodies. So keep an eye out for that, but in the meantime, uh, puppy dog stole lamb, need that video. People are not gonna stay quarantined for more than 30 days, this is ridiculous. I'm keto, is this keto fr friendly food? Great, so what is keto? Keto, you know, if you look at uh, keto friendly foods are basically saying we need to do things that are f fundamentally uh, if you look at a lot of the work that's been done on ketogenic diets, it's actually antimicrobial, antiparasitic. It supports your body to actually do digestion. So um, one of the things, let me, um, one of the things I wanted to share is, do I have it here? Um, one of the important things is all of these herbs here support digestion because not only do you need to support the thyroid to create vitamin A, you know, a lot of the carotenoids, the dark, that's why I put in those dark yams in here. But I also added the dulse, someone stole from here. I don't think the dog stole it. But this dulse, which supports iodine. But in order to support your gut, you need to be able to make sure that when you put something in, it transports into your gut. Your gut is like a nuclear reactor. It digests it. And digestion is typically done by proper release of acids. All of these herbs here support the proper release of acids. Now, if you can't do that, one second here, um, you can take something like you know, you should talk to, again, your doctor, HCL. This is hydrochloric acid pepsin, which will support digestion. As you age, your body starts producing less HCL, especially if you eat a lot of garbage, okay? And when you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid, what happens? Your digestion gets bad. You produce a lot of waste products, and that leads to dysfunction in your microbiome, which lowers your immune system. I hope this is making sense, okay? But if you eat these powerful herbs, you're supporting digestion. Look, a simple way to look at it is your, your stomach, Paul Pitchford used to say this, is literally the earth element of your body. You want things to be able to be pulverized and digested in there. Digestion is key to health. If you don't digest properly, you're gonna have health problems. That's why in many traditional cultures, they ate food a certain way. You know, you rarely ate a, 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 a very heavy meal and ate fruit after it because the fruit starts fermenting there. How you eat things, the order on how you eat things, these were became cultural ways that people survived, right? Um, so there's a lot to be learned from indigenous cultures. And in some ways, I gotta tell you, you know, it's almost like the, and don't take this the wrong way, it's like the white man has really hurt the world in a lot of ways by pushing white man's medicine, which is drugs, 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 vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. And again, this is not a racist point. If anything, it's actually racist that we diminished in, uh, indigenous medicines. And what we see right now, from my standpoint, because I've been, I've been trained in Western medicine and Eastern medicine, yep? Just be careful. You're, yeah. yeah, in both these systems of medicine, what I see going on is that there's a hegemony of always promoting pharmaceutical drugs. And in fact, in places like India, most of these very dumb MDs who get trained there now, including some of my cousins, who are not that bright guys, by the way, okay? Many of my cousins basically, uh, their parents forced them into medical school, somehow got them in there. I'm saying this in a very uh, unfortunate way, um, that these people should actually be doctors. I would never want to see these people. And many of them poo-poo traditional systems of medicine. In fact, in Indian villages, you're gonna find this interesting today, when a person goes to the the conventional doctor, they're upset if they don't get an injection, okay? So what's happened is even the notion of Western medicine has infiltrated all the way down to the village that even I was at. It's very different now. It's not where I grew up in the 1960s or 70s. If you go to the doctor, people say, oh, he didn't give me a needle, he's a bad doctor. Seriously, because people think that getting a needle means it's a status symbol. So. Part of what we need to understand is that 
public relations, media, influences what we think about medicine. So all of you who are so frightened right now that this virus is gonna devastate everyone, right? Just remember this, that we grew up among viruses. We have 380 trillion viruses within us. Let me repeat that. I don't think Anthony Fauci has shared that with anyone. I'm sure he hasn't told the president about that, okay? There's 380 trillion viruses in our bodies, 60 trillion microbes, okay? We came out of that dirt. You know, when I was traveling in Africa, it was quite fascinating. You look out and you see these monkeys and you see these animals and you say, Jesus Christ, we were out there once, okay? Not that long ago, if you believe that. We were out there among animals and we came out of that soil and we're surviving here, okay? So the entire germ theory, the entire theory that these things come and they kill us and they destroy us, well, there's a balance here. If you live in filth all the time, in horrible conditions like was occurring in the 1800s, in the industrial era, smoke, smog, you don't get enough vitamin D and A, well, your immune system is gonna be compromised, okay? And that's why hygiene, sanitation, vitamin A, vitamin D, ending child labor were so important. It wasn't medical interventions though, okay? Pop it open. No, okay, no. so what I'm gonna do, by the way, just a quick thing, is this is beeping, and what you'll notice here, I'm gonna move this over here a little bit. Um, this is the steam, okay? And what I'm gonna do is now, what I'm gonna do is, I let out the steam here, and you can decide how much steam to let out, but I'm gonna let out all the steam, and what, what we're doing here is, we're letting out all the steam that's coming out, and, and it'll go up here, and all the steam is being let out. Uh, I typically like to do it over here, it's through there, but it's hot steam, it's not that bad. And when this is, when all the steam goes, you know, don't do what the guy's doing, by the way, this should not be done at home, okay? <laughs> uh, but what you're seeing is the steam is being let down, and this is the pressure and the steam that cooks this amazing meal, and it smells great, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to um, plate some of it here, and we're gonna have our assistant, Michelle, come over here, uh, and Michelle's gonna help us plate here. And, and then we're all gonna eat it. I wish you guys could join us, but we're having a very nutritious, medicinal meal, supports our digestion, supports transport, and it's very, very nutritious. Again, to those of you who are, you know, against carbs, by the way, I don't, you know, depending on I'm working out and et cetera, I watch my carbs, but this is, you know, very, very nutritious fermented food, okay? You don't see a lot of fat Japanese, okay? They've been eating rice for a long time, okay? Um, and then we have some amazing green here. You notice the green here is quite nice, it's not dead, okay? You notice the beautiful rice here. It's quite nice, okay? And then, Michelle, why don't we plate, when this is done, some rice and we'll make plates for each person. But I, I guess the takeaway here, guys, is stop being so afraid, there's nothing to fear. What we need to be afraid of is ignorance, okay? That's what we need to be afraid of. We need to be afraid of single people like Emperor Fauci, who is tell, who has basically built his entire career uh, on fake science. He built his career on the HIV causing AIDS narrative, which we're gonna be blowing out of the water, just keep an eye out over the next, this coming week, okay? But it's about time people realize, let's start eating, food, what we put in, but we also should make sure where is this food coming from? The politicians, the lawyer, lobbyists, swamp scum, have created a world where they have supported poisoning of our food, poisoning of our air, poisoning of our water. And that's who we should stop voting in. We need to create the future. People who give you knowledge, like myself, with systems knowledge, which I hope to make, we're working very hard to make that available. Cytosol, this technology I built, actually can help us understand the combinations of food. Um, by the way, if people go online, you'll see one of the things I've done with my educational foundation. We help the, 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 the amazing, innovative manufacturers by creating a thing called Clean Food Certified. Clean Food Certified, which is a new symbol which really looks at the foods being non-GMO, uh, the bioavailability of the food, the nutrient density. You should go check that out. Bottom line is Systems Health is something we want to bring to all of you to really help you understand health from a systems perspective. We're, we're gonna be analyzing many of these products through Cytosol to find out what's real, what isn't. 
and then the clean food certified thing. Anyway, if there's no other questions, Michelle's gonna now plate this. So you can see here, uh, let me get a spoon here. Here it is. Yeah. Right well, what I wanna show people is, you can see here that this is really, really, you can bring it in here. This is really a, a very nice, uh, it's all the different, this is really what you would call, now it's, it has a lot of water in it. One of the things I can do is I can saute it, right? And I can, so what I can do here is turn this here and just put it on to saute, right? If I want to. If you want to, but this, the juice will be good over but, the rice. Yeah, but the juice is great, but you can see this, the nutrition in here, if you look at this, people talk about bone broth. Well, this is bone broth. Plus it's all those amazing nutrients. You know, if you wanna kill a virus, okay? Kill bacteria, kill parasites. There's nothing better than this. And if you eat this on a regular basis, you actually support your immune system to get stronger and to support all those immune processes. So Michelle, you can see he's uh, putting in some yams here. You can zoom in on what she's doing. And maybe we actually use the bone and we have the lamb here. So everyone's gonna get a nice piece of lamb here. So let's, that's good, let's give that to one person. Let's plate another one here. I'm gonna put them over here. You can set them right back over here. Okay. Here's your remote camera. That's another one. One over here. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. You guys like salt? A little bit? Okay. So I'm just going to sprinkle some salt for everyone. There. And then one more for me. I'm just going to settle it over here so everyone can see what we got here. Shannon, you said you're going to release the report, right? Yes. Are you going to send? Yes. So as Michelle's plating this, so tomorrow um, evening, I will be sending. The, we'll be. I'll be sending this report to President Trump about a triage model for getting our economy back up, and also how to protect you, you guys. And it'll be a recommendation. But I'll make that recommendation accessible. So if you guys want to read the report, it's up to you. Again, for the mafia of the MD world who tries to own all of us, there will be a nice big disclaimer, which will say this is not medical advice, it, uh, it, and it, it is essentially my opinion and if you want to see this as medical advice if you want to get the advice of a medical professional you have to go see uh, one of these mds okay but in that report it's going to be an integration of explaining to the president uh, the view of the modern uh, immune system so he can hopefully sit with fauci and if he wants me to come in ask fauci why he's been bullshitting him okay and second um he can ask, well, what about Dr. Shiva's plan here? Why are we shutting down the entire economy? And then there'll actually be recommendations of why don't we give our people this? Why don't we give our elderly people some vitamin C and glutathione? How come you haven't recommended this? And I hope that when the president reads this, uh, I'll be available if he wants me to be on a conference call with Fauci. But what we see happening in this country is one man is the face of big pharma and big vaccines because where this is headed next year mark my words come this time the next virus that comes you're gonna have people knocking on your door not saying hey would you like a bowl of curry or would you like me to teach you but let me have a let me freaking vaccinate you and we cannot allow that to happen we got to bring this back to some semblance of truth we have to learn from our forefathers how people ate there's a lot of things that we can learn from indigenous people they actually knew how to live and survive. Remember, they lived in the woods that, you know, and they knew how to survive and overcome things. And uh, the whole concept of vaccines, by the way, is not new. The, uh, the, uh, the, the thought of exposing you to a, an agent ahead to stop you goes back to the time of variolation. The Chinese used to do it. The, the Africans used to do it. So we're not against exposing you to protect you, like what happened with the smallpox. Um, um, George Washington did it. But the vaccines we have today are mimicking, are attempting to mimic nature where they add a dead, anti, a dead version of the virus and then they layer in aluminum and all sorts of other things because their methodology is not working. So they layer in these other things to create inflammation. And it's about, and, and we have to recognize that organizations like the CDC cannot be trusted. 
because they have a revolving door. So he, here you go. Uh, <laughs> Let's you guys want to try it? it? <laughs> um, you want to try it, Michelle? Yes. So I'll let Michelle be our taster. Oh. Okay. And then we'll it have. Smells delicious. And I'll hold it for yeah. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Phenomenal. A little bit it's more. Delicious. Yeah. It has a sweet flavor, and if you want to add a little more salt, we can. I didn't add chili peppers, which I like. You know, I have a some ha fresh organic habanero sauce we made that we can add to it. Uh, would you like to try, Karina? I'll hold it for you. Huh? You're good? Okay. Nancy? Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. So anyway, everyone, I know uh, this was long, but uh, uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I think the takeaway is people are home with their families. Start getting back to food is medicine. Mm -hmm. Let's not believe these people who keep trying to inject us with vaccines and pharmaceuticals, vaccines and pharmaceuticals, vaccines and pharmaceuticals. And let's also understand that the modern day medical doctor is very, very ill-trained, if anything, on understanding the body as a whole system. And, if, and I've gotten many, many calls for MDs and surgeons thanking me. And the MDs who don't wanna follow this are probably the guys who weren't that smart anyway, okay? And they're the guys who probably should stay and give themselves drugs and vaccines all day for themselves and not for us, but we need to start taking control of our health. We need to decentralize health back to you and me and our doctor not this you know, top-down, nationalized model of healthcare. Not only is it gonna bankrupt our economy, but it's gonna bankrupt our health. Anyway, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I hope you have fun. Go to Shiva for Senate. Donate either your time to help us get the system self tools. And again, I promise you I'm working very hard to figure out a way how to take this educational model of system self that I used to do one-on-one, -on -one, charge a lot of money. People used to pay me a lot of money, do it in a much more simpler way, in a much more affordable way for everyone. It's time that a systems approach to health uh, takes place and it's my job to help you get there. So thank you very much. Be well, have a good weekend.